Welcome to Tigers Untapped, a Bluff City Media podcast. Stepping up to the microphones are your hosts, Trey Lasley and TJ Willis. Pull up your chair, grab your favorite brew, and enjoy the conversation. Now, let's get to the show. Happy 70th, TJ, as you listen at home in the car, on the road, wherever you are. Tigers Untapped, the 70th edition. Timothy, what lukewarm beer are we drinking this evening? Why is yours lukewarm? Mine's cold. Because I've been it's been sitting here for yeah, it's true. 37 minutes. Crosstown, six cents, a Munich uh Dunkel. Dunkel. Is what this is. Uh Six We're drinking cents. it this evening. We'll get to it in a second. But for all the dunkles that PJ Haggerty and Dayton Danger are going to do this year. All right, cut the episode. What is that? So are you already you're that already is... going danger instead of danger? Uh, well, I, you know danger. <laughs> what? Nothing. This is so dark. This is yeah. There's something going on there. And I don't know how it's I feel not about cold. It. How disappointed are you going to be in Tiger Game Ops if they bust out? Highway no, to I'm, the danger zone. I was going to scream that out and start singing in the midway of the section. So Highway now you've ruined it. Now I can't do it. Danger zone. We need yeah. danger zone gear, just like Will said in Discord. Yeah, it's we easy marketing it. there. Easy marketing, I think. Um. Off the top, though, historical weekend for Memphis Athletics. As uh, I don't think TJ knew this until I just told him when he sat down right before we started. The University of Memphis baseball team, with their first road sweep, get the brooms out, 3-0 weekend over Rice. First one since 2012. <laughs> because it doesn't sound real. It doesn't sound real. And... Um, that's impressive. Impressively that we went bad. Twelve years, <laughs> yeah, without winning three, uh, three ball games in a row against a ball club. It is a road sweep, so I guess that, I guess that that is like the. I don't, did we even? On it, right? Have we? I, well, I guess they would have said first road series win too. So I'm sure we've gone two and one a couple of times. Yeah, it's just. It I seems, mean, admittedly, I don't keep up with the baseball team that much. I feel but, like we have more recently, though. We were we were big on yeah, KJ. Last, yeah, last year. Um they're seventeen and seventeen this year, moved to five and four in the American, which puts them at sixth. Not terrible. Mm-hmm. Not the best, but right there in the middle of the road. Yeah. So hopefully you can keep that going on. If you haven't gotten out, they've won four straight now. They knocked off Ole Miss uh at home last Wednesday, then obviously went down to Houston and beat Rice in three games. I think they uh host Central Arkansas tonight. Wednesday, this airing Wednesday, uh, and then have UTSA at home this weekend. So try to get out there to FedEx Park and catch out, catch the diamond tigs. Have you seen? It's about the, time for us to bust out our. Uh, maybe our we'll do that next jersey. week. Yeah, we'll see if they win. We'll do it that way. Maybe just throw it in rotation. I don't know. We'll see. Two conference sweeps. That would be. Have you seen much. the baseball park lately? After all the renovations, uh, I have not been out there since they. It was a big dirt pile. Uh, it's nice. Is it? It looks really nice. They've done a good job. I figured they would. I mean, it even looked good as a dirt pile. Shout out Avrin Fogelman. Well, kind of. He needs to stop throwing so much money at Tulane. That kind of makes me mad, but that's... Neither here nor there. there. Whoa. Jinx, you owe me a dunk hole. Uh, In transfer portal news, you want to start with... uh, You want to start with landings or departures? No, departures. We'll, We'll end on the high note. Okay. I will remember you. What do you think it was like when Ashton told his dad he was leaving? <laughs> I think Penny knew. Do you what know do they you do those that exit his dad interviews? told him? No, I need you to. No, leave. no, no, no. I think Penny would want Ashton back. Heck yeah, he like, dude. He played him all year. Yeah, he, he clearly valued. There's some stretches where he didn't get time. I do. I think it's best for both parties, though. I mean, it's got to be tough. Playing as a coach's son, like obviously it's it's not tough for little Rick. He just busts his ass in practice and is at the end of the bench. He's a hype guy, gets in at the end of the game of a blowout. But if you're not like 
a legitimate superstar. Sure. I mean, it's got to be tough to be the coach's son. Well, yeah. I mean, there's expectations that come with your last name as one. And then well, and when you do play, you're just not that great. Which I'm not holding against Ashton. It is hard to be a true freshman and be good at the collegiate level. Sure. You don't expect many true freshmen to make an impact. Sure. Now, he came out hot. With that Michigan game. Down there in the Bahamas. So we're like, well. But after that. I mean, he's, he scored, what do you have, 17 in that game or something? Yeah. He scored like a third of his points in that one game for the whole season. What are you going to do? Um, but it's got to be tough. Like, and I, the other guys on the team, too, like maybe they're not vocally saying it, but you know that at some point they were like, why, why is Ashton playing over me? Yeah. He's only playing him because he's his son. Well, I think he also gave you the potential of hitting a three-pointer. He's a big body that could hit three-pointers. Did he hit them I mean, he gave you the in games? He definitely no. gave you the potential of it's shooting a, a three-pointer. Yes, it is a potential that's more just, so man, than That's others. just rude. I know, right? I'm trying to I mean, be can we go back here. to the Ole Miss game when Penny legitimately said in the post game that like the last three possessions down the floor were all corner three, drawn up corner threes for Ashton. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that, man. Well, I, if, all right, let's look at it this way. In terms of what he provided you, it was the potential of a three and size. That's really about it. Yeah. Right. If physically, he was not mature enough to be a four. Defensively, a liability. A three, he was not fast enough to cover. Yeah. It just, there, there was low expect. There should have been low expectations for him as a true freshman. Now, when he's a junior, perhaps it's a different story. I don't know. I'm not going to figure that out. Yeah, I think he's going to head back west. I was about to say, surely he's going back, back to Cali. Yeah, go to freaking San Jose. Go go somewhere over there. Really? I don't know. I've just made up a school that's in San Jose State. Yeah, I just made up a school on the West Coast. Mm. Just go somewhere that's going to be a, a lower tier. Where exactly was he from? That's a canny question. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> that's a, that's a. How the hell should I know? Yeah, I mean, look, I I think everyone knows he's likely to go back west. Now that I say this, he's probably going to go to like Maryland or something ridiculous. But Maryland, yeah, just, Carson, California. I don't know where that is. You just made that's that what up. I'm looking up. But. I think he's likely to just go back west. He's going to be close to his mom. He'll probably be at a school where he's not coached by his dad, so you kind of remove some of those hardships out of the process. And you know, maybe maybe it's it'll near work Long out Beach. He's going to go or Long Santa Beach Monica. State. Perfect, Long Beach State. Nailed it. Go be good there. Hmm. You know, go be good there. That is not the only loss that we had. What other loss? Carl. We talked about that last we week. Carl. Last week. I know, but it's, I'm just trying to think of guys that have left here recently. It is troubling that, uh, I mean, to your point, both of Ashton being a junior and being able to produce, like both Carl and Ashton, we've talked about it, like to rebuild a team every single year with new guys coming in, like you need some continuity. And those were yeah. two – Perfect pieces that you could have kept around. And Definitely had. Like, not perfect. Not perfect, but well, they're, in theory, they're here, and those are kinds of guys that you could develop and come junior or senior year. They're the ones that are helping establish the culture. They've been in the program. They know what it takes. They've got, hopefully, at that point, a defined. What are you doing? I was drinking my beer. Why that way? What do you mean? That was intense. <laughs> And very Slurp-esque. Sorry. I didn't mean to derail you there. I'm sure you just blew somebody's eardrums listening. <laughs> that was horrible. Do you I'm not do sure why you made that. The intrusive thoughts won for sure there. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what I was talking about anymore. <laughs> Carl and Ashton. Perfect opportunity to develop them, keeping the program, establish a culture. There. No? no? Kenny said no. They're not perfect. No, well, of us are. We're humans. Yeah, he just doesn't uh, think that they're very beneficial. No. But maybe that'll be, uh, what, PJ's got three years left. So we'll whoa, talk. whoa, whoa, whoa. What? That is the perfect 
continuity builder. Spoiler alert. <clears throat> we got we're, a, no, we're, we're at the Memphis airport. We've already talked about the departures. We're at the baggage claim, and we are picking up PJ yeah, Agri. We got arrivals, baby. Uh, Penny loves him some AAC ballers. I I have no problem him taking that on. Who was I think it was JT, wasn't it? Pittner in the Discord after... I mean, it was weeks ago, months ago. It was still it in was the like season. It was like quite literally after like, the game. I see that uh, future Tiger PJ Tucker or PJ Haggerty had a great game. PJ Tucker, I don't a know. Great addition, yeah, would be great. Um, it is remarkable that uh, the handshake line is so productive, for undefeated Penny. at this point. So I think at one point we talked about like just disbanding the handshake line because it's unfair. People it makes get for punched un- in the face and stuff. But yeah, I've, from Penny's perspective, like we need no. to continue. The only one that it hasn't worked on was our guy Yaxel. Because they were full court pressing him in that line. Yeah, we gotta do. He Whatever. gets Dreamland barbecue whenever he wants. Unlimited what? Dreamland. Is that good? I it's okay barbecue to me, but I would have thought you'd like I thought Bucky. There's that Bucky's in outside Birmingham. You pronounce it Bucky's, not Busey's. <laughs> TJ is on one tonight, what man. Is what is wrong with him tonight? What is going on? <laughs> Trey, do, the, do I need to step in, the Trey? The Burks with ankle socks. He's <laughs> yeah, wearing ankle socks. Slurping Dunkel. He's doing those shows, brother. And talking about bussies. <laughs> I did not say bussy. <laughs> I, I stopped he did, myself. He did say it. <laughs> I stopped myself. <laughs> For real, though, I've never been to a Bucky's, but supposedly the Burks is oh, great. You've never been to Bucky's? I've only driven by. We didn't stop. Oh, dude. On the way to the beach, there's one that's right on the interstate to the right. It's... It's we actually overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. Through actually. Birmingham? Yeah. Well, yeah. not th- this one. No, this can't be th- in Birmingham. There's one outside Birmingham. Which beach are you going to and which way are you driving? Uh, my wife is driving that leg, so don't let me lie to you on what road it's on. <laughs> Just look. give me a general town. Like where we're going to the beach? No, where are you? In- I, don't, I literally don't know. You just look up and there's a Bucky's? Yeah, it's on the right Sorry, side. Sorry, a, a Bucky's. A Bucky's. <laughs> Busey's is what I said. Whatever, dude. There's one in Birmingham, and we go that way, but I feel like it's out of the way. You got to go out of the way a little while, a bit Look, to get there. We are off time. And when we go to Birmingham, look it up. we go out of the way, but we go out of the way of the Shake Shack. You guys do do that. It's incredible. I, we would never. I get Shake Shack two times a year, and it's uh, during the beach trip. All right. Let's get back on track, and I'll look this up in the meanwhile. Anyway, uh, we're at the baggage claim. Landings. We had two last week. Big week for the Tigs. Some outlets had PJ ranked as high as the number two overall player in the transfer portal, which I think at last week at some point, TJ, you said there were like thirteen hundred people in the portal, something like that. Yeah. So to land, to land the number two guy is pretty big. Seems like a good thing. Uh, started his career at TCU, redshirted. Was his real freshman season last year at Tulsa? Averaged 21, five and a half rebounds, almost four assists, shot basically 50% from the field. Not terrible three point percentage at 29%, but not great. 77% from the free throw line. Biggest thing, though, in free throw line, my man was third in the nation at drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line. Pros and cons. On that. What? A, we were talking about this earlier. You know I love guards that can just yam, just yam on somebody. Yeah. He will do that. He will draw contact. But at 75, 76%, I'm going to need that number to go up a little bit. Yeah, but when he's he's making eight a game. I know. I get it. Make just hit, Get me eight. Shooting, he's shooting 11 a game. I mean, that's. Give me 80. That's eight more than most people. Teach Are we for real complaining about seventy eight percent? No, throw I just I'm just saying. Well, can, I mean, he's, be... to to TJ's point, you know that as soon as he puts on the Memphis uniform, that seventy eight percent is going to drop to about statistically sixty five, sixty nine, yeah, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Because just DeAndre somehow... came here of eighty plus percent free throw shooter and went to like sixty eight. Yeah. The drop of a hat, it just happens. There's something in the water here. We have damn good water, very good water. But uh, for some reason, it makes your free throw percentage drop. I don't know. It's nitpicking for sure. But it, 
if you're going to draw that kind of fouls, I'd like it to pay off. They are free points, so I'd like them to be free. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, clearly, what do you think this says about the chances of David Jones coming? Do you think it says anything at all um, about it? Not Haggerty. I don't think Haggerty. I mean, this, he's going to at this point. He's going to be your your ball dominant guard. Yeah. And we were talking about before. He's very Jeremiah Martin esque to me. Like I don't think he's a. True, I don't know why I thought you were just about to say very geriatric, and I. That's just I don't know. You started saying he's very geriatric. No, he's got three years left. I know. I was like, he's relatively young, TJ. I don't know. No, he's very Jeremiah Mar- Jeremiah Martin. I almost said geriatric then. Jeremiah Martin esque to me in the sense that he is not a true point guard in my eyes, but he can be that lead guy yeah. and be efficient. I mean, he's a combo guard that can handle the ball, score yeah. it at all three levels. I mean, he gets to the rim. He can obviously not to TJ's liking, but he can shoot the three ball. Yeah, thirty percent good. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's twenty nine. It's not I would great. Not. That's by any definitely means, but sub. Some of uh, like how much of that is because. Defenders are focused on him primarily, and he's not getting maybe to his spots on the floor. Sure, the ball's in his I'm hand sure at the last of a shot clock. He's having to throw up a shot. Like, look at David Jones for example. I forget what he was, but he was in the twenties before he came here. Yeah, and then had a great year. Shoot, I mean, maybe that's not the best example because <laughs> he shot so many contested threes this year. But maybe it says more about like getting to his spots on the floor, which we I'm know Penny's you. great at doing is like getting. Getting guys to understand where they're best and most effective on the floor. And well, and he came out and specifically said Penny fixed his shot when he got here. Yeah. So, yeah. I so I'm not too worried about the 29. percent I think he's he's capable, and I think getting here, working with Penny, and in this offense, it, we could. I would not be surprised to like look up next year and he's like pushing 35 percent or something. 35 would be a big jump. I, I would say I'd give him a three-point swing. I'm, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he's sitting in like 48% and leading the nation. I'll take it. What is a good three-point shooter in college to y'all, percentage-wise? Uh, what's North the North of 34. I think 33 is about average, is like yeah. Yeah. that tier of where you're you're like, okay, this guy can shoot. I think right. if I see 35%, well. I go, that's a shooter. Yeah, yeah. anything over 34. I was I think saying is, I'm using like 33 is where I'm starting to say like, Okay. Yeah, they're like a shoots. fringe good shooter. Right. Anything so. above that is you're pretty good. But I'm not going to sit there and say someone's a sniper at 35. Per- Man, I guess yeah, that's, that's that's pretty kind good. of pushing it for <laughs> sniper. Yeah. I mean, there's like a tier, right? I mean, if we're talking sniper, I think you're anything 35 and up. It's obviously sniper. But it, what are we making up phrases here? But like, if you're at 34, I'm going to say you're. Probably a, you're a pretty good shooter. Yeah. And 35 is when you're starting to hit like that upper echelon type of tier. Yeah. But I don't know if. I mean, it also, I think it, it depends on your clip, right? How many are you pull on? Sure. Yeah. More than more than three a game. If, you're, shoot, let's if you're shooting 35% and only making one three a game, then like, what's the point? Yeah. What well, like, were well, Lester's stats? Because Lester definitely got to a point where you're like, all right. Well, Lester. By his junior year was a snipe. Yeah, <laughs> Lester definitely got to a point where you're like, all right, this dude. I mean, he can I, do it. there was a point in time, legitimately, where I expected every time he shot a three to it for it to go in. I think that was his junior year, right? Yeah, his last year, and that's not very common for me. Okay, well, turns out jokes on us because it was he both. he didn't shoot that well. No, it was both oh. years. So his freshman year was on four attempts a game at 31, and you're like, meh. But then 3.9 attempts got him to 40. And four attempts got him to 39. So, yes, I, yeah, that's I very, mean, very good. Very, very good. Sniping. And there's there's stuff out there that, that shows that Haggerty can be a good shooter. So maybe it is. It's a form yeah, He's thing. a product right. of right. Well, of I think it's that, team. too. And I think it's, yeah, being on a Tulsa team where he's the guy. The, the He is the team. Yeah. And so I'm sure he was in countless situations where, whoa, he just – Try to get a pop bank dunk. On. Why don't you tell everybody what's going on? What time? It's Monday night. Uh, it is Monday night. We are currently watching UConn up eleven on Purdue with thirteen and a half minutes left. Now they're up nine. Edie just jammed it on Klingon's head. It popped out, but they gave it to him for goaltending. Anyway, with PJ, honestly, if you look at his shot, he's got a little bit too much movement in his body when he shoots and penny can get that dealt with quick 
his his release is a little bit too long. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like yeah. it starts at his he shoots it kind of from his stomach. Sure. Is he like Sean Marion, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. But no, it's just a little bit too long. And so if he were just a if Penny were to come in and just go, hey man, shorten that shorten that shit up, he'd be fine. Unrelated. Yeah. Zach Keaty has eighteen right now. We were talking about that beforehand. Yeah, I haven't seen much of since he scored like thirteen straight, but um no, go back to your original question. I don't think this has any indication on David Jones because I think the two can coexist, right? right. I, I think bringing in Haggerty is actually very good for David Jones because that means you don't have him trying to dribble with his – with like just in general, don't touch the ball unless you're shooting it or yeah. attacking the rim kind of thing. Which I was talking about today, like if there's anything that's holding him back, he's still not on draft board. So I think it's obviously going to be like the feedback he gets, his workouts, how he performs, but – I mean, from a ball handling perspective, I don't think there's any way that he no. he wouldn't last in even in the G League. I don't think right now with yeah. the ball. And handling. he would have he would have to uh, really clean up defensively the yeah, risk that's what I say. Yeah. that he takes, <laughs> Just which were a you. lot high risk, no reward most of the time. Yeah, he's got very very fast hands on defense. Yeah. But I would have no problem with a at all. I would. Be very pleased with the Haggerty one, David Jones two or three. Sure. Is that, an, up, is that an upgrade from JQ, to be honest? Mm, I think so. I I wavered on JQ for a while because I thought I think he it was supposed on what to be J- a very good defender and a very good point guard. I think it depends on what JQ you were getting, though. That's Which in of itself may just be an upgrade if you can get a consistent PJ every night, night in and night out, that just comes in and yeah, wants, just consistency. wants to ball out. Which... I don't know if you guys saw Parse's article today, but he uh, he wrote an article after uh, interviewing PJ. And PJ said, I'm going to play every game like it's my last game. This is a, a sophomore talking. I mean, this should have been a, a quote from JQ as a fifth-year senior. <laughs> I'm going to play every game like it's my last game. I'm going to bring a lot of wins to the city. Now, again, that's a guy talking Beautiful. in the offseason, what, eight – six seven eight months before we're playing basketball yeah i like that though uh, i mean i do too the talk's cheap is it not awesome that we're talking about pj Haggerty? is it not awesome that penny has already seemingly found his centerpiece for next year already in no, april that is that's key right the one thing we have talked about many times is like we were assembling a team in october i mean that's I, like, what I now you've still, got your starting guard i still in super early i, I wouldn't i'm Banking on some sort of roster construction still happening come well, the time football starting. You also have 10 spots to fill as well. So. But you're true. also not – I mean, right now at about this time, it was Nick Jordan last year. Sure. Which is – Nick Jordan was a great piece, but everybody knew when Nick, Nick committed. Right. You didn't, he's not the guy. Right. You're not getting the biggest yeah. um, commitment. He's not the piece. Like, sure. Right now it feels like you got your piece – we're waiting on David. You got your piece. Now let's fill in the gaps around, right? Like let's fill in the roster spots around to like maximize what PJ Haggerty can do. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, a, that's a unique position Penny Penny hasn't been in in a while. <clears throat> well, I mean, I mean, two years ago you got Kendrick, Kendrick pretty yeah. early. When was Kendrick? I'd like to. Know, let, me, let me. I think he committed in April. Did he really? Yeah, Kendrick was. I'm early fairly up, certain it was like mid late April. And, and look what happened. It was their best team. He's sure. Said, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, well, no, I agree. Their most it, successful team. 100%. Sure. But you also had DeAndre. Yeah. Team, best team for sure. Yeah. Not I, most talented, no, no, top no. to bottom. For sure. But best team. I, I would agree with that. I'd agree 100%. with that. 100%. Yeah. No, I, I just wanted to put an asterisk that it wasn't just like a Kendrick thing. That right. was definitely a DeAndre thing. You're right. April yeah, 23rd, yeah. 2022 was when he announced. Right. You obviously already had DeAndre here, but landing Kendrick was the piece that you needed, True. and he got it fairly early. Wasn't DeAndre in the draft, during, or wasn't he doing draft stuff at that point? Had he announced that he was coming back? I think he had. Because mm-hmm. DeAndre wasn't a, a lock. Right. But I... I didn't think John maybe he did. I just remember that Lester was the one we were waiting on. Yeah, because Kendrick committed. Remember he committed and he like made that comparison to the Grizzlies and he yeah. was like saying he was Jaw and 
DeAndre was J, Triple J. And Dang, man. Imagine if we had Lester, DeAndre, and Kendrick that year. We'd have gone to the Final Four. Oh, what could have been? Uh, but PJ was not the only commit. Friday, we got a commit from Illinois transfer big man. Pew, 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 pew. Dane Danger. To the danger zone. Danger zone. Uh, I've seen a little bit of, I mean, he didn't play a ton of minutes. I'll say that. But that in the, I think he played like 10, 12 a night. Uh,. He averaged 10.7 minutes a night, shot 48% from, no, 67% from the field, 48% from free throw, which is literally disgusting. Uh, Average almost four boards, six and four in 10 minutes. Does it worry you that he didn't play a lot of minutes? It doesn't worry me. I'll say this. I've seen a lot of Illinois fans that really liked it. It is wild. Yeah, like it, it that is wild but to me. Like love, solid, yeah. like positive outcries. And yeah, and have come to various Memphis forms to be like, you guys are going to love this kid. Yeah. And that have said they wish actually that the coach, what's his name, Brad Underwood, Underwood, Underwood. yeah, had actually played Danger More. over Coleman. So I, I was I mean, I was watching some stuff earlier just different kind of YouTube podcasts and stuff, breaking it down. Like some of the best basketball Illinois played was when they were playing danger more. Yeah. Like in the big 10 tournament, tournament. run and then their tournament. I saw that. The with the game I mean, he was, there were nights he was playing 25 plus minutes a game and his per 40 ratings. I think he, I uh, had that same note written down. What is it? It's it was like 23 and 14 or something. Uh, let me click back over hit 23 points, 13 boards and two blocks. Like stop. Granted, he's not gonna play forty minutes, but just give me. But that's also Big me, Ten. That's yeah. based off his Big Ten. Numbers. Give me some of that. I mean, who in the American is guard? He's how often can he all out? And TJ, how often is a center of his size? What is he six nine two seventy five? Referred to as a bucket. That's a good question. I mean, I mean that's a PJ Haggerty David Jones label. And I, there were numerous things that I either watched or read today that were literally referred to Danger as a bucket. Can we ask you this? Can he be DJ Burns? Just that, can that, he? That big dude. Yeah. Just straight bucket. Freaking twinkle toes, nimble as can be. Jack jump over the candlestick. Yeah. We'll see. But, but that, going back to your question, you asked the question a few minutes ago, TJ, does it concern you that he didn't play? The only thing that concerns me about it is why he didn't play. And that's sure. the fact that what's his, what's the kid's name? Coleman. Yeah. They that Underwood wanted to move into more of a up and down spread. Yeah. Using also, the big as a spread. And right. and that's that's why he didn't play because that's not fit that doesn't fit his style, which isn't that kind of what it's, we've been talking about with him. See, that's I what was. I was gonna go to is like, is this it's a little bit of a concern because they're like, hey, we want a big running five that can play faster. And this feels more like now I'm not saying that he is Jordan Brown. I'm just saying they are the same type of player where it's like a true like does he need down, the ball to be effective? Feed him the post, yeah, kind of guy. And let me, I, I've been screaming that same thing, but let me counter it with take away what we know of Memphis basketball in the past. I mean, if Penny's willing to change and slow down and I, do that, I'm I think for this it. is a Rick. Rick planting his flag. Think mm. back at Western Kentucky when, when Basie, Bassy, Basie, Bassy, Bassy, Charles Bassy. I was like, why Bussie? am I saying the same? <laughs> Bussy, Charles Bussy. <laughs> when Bassy was there, they slowed it down. I mean, that that's just his style. It, it's more slow it down, <laughs> feed the big man, and um, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say they're gonna yeah, completely change be, it because we haven't be seen right. Penny. You may be right. Do that yet. It's always been but defend could, and it pay. It could be Rick like and pace, but I think this is Rick planting his flag, saying, "Hey, give me this guy." Hey, sometimes and you got to go work. get the guys and and change your scheme around what you got, as we, opposed to getting guys and forcing them to try to do your yeah, which is fine. It's what we it didn't work out, but it's what we said with um, yeah. with Brown. You just put in Jordan Brown and let him let slow the game down, feed it to him, and just let him cook. Yeah, he didn't do it. 
He didn't cook at all. He didn't microwave. He, I mean, didn't, he didn't even turn an appliance on. No, it wasn't close. But may, look, there may not have been electricity in the building. Looking at um, conference tournament for Danger, we got nine points in 15 minutes. That is a nine and five in 15 minutes. Uh, at 18 and eight in 20 minutes, a nine and seven in 23, a 21 and eight in 23 minutes. Like, yeah. I mean, it sounds like the guy can cook. And, and I know there's some general concerns around him as a defender, but that's against the Big Ten. So when you look at him against yeah, the American, I, I mean, like, he, what does that turn into? Is it well, that big of a concern? In four games in the NCAA tournament, he had six blocks. He had two against Moorhead State, two against Iowa State, and two against UConn. I mean, he he can he will block shots. I think the concern is getting outside of the paint around the perimeter. You're not gonna be able, he's not gonna really be able to hedge. You're gonna be able to switch. He's not gonna be able to take on a. He's not gonna be able to pull what Malcolm was pulling sure. earlier this year and lock down sitting at the top of the key. Right, yeah. A guard. You don't want him to do that though. Right, you don't. I don't so think you're gonna have to, to. You're gonna have to change. Philosophy yeah, they and how you're drop kinda, coverage on him, and right. he just sinks back. Defensively, how you're doing things. The difference is you've got a guard in P.J. Haggerty who's willing to get his ass down and, and actually fight through picks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You didn't have so that that's with what JQ. I, like, it's what he brings offensively and then rebounding, I think, far and away makes up for any sure. lack of defensive. Yeah. Can I throw out a hypothetical to y'all yeah. and see what y'all's thoughts are? Let's do it. Could he be DJ Burns? Yes, I just made that argument. Could he be Malcolm Dandridge without the injury and hometown baggage? I I think he'd be better than Malcolm. What yeah. I was about to say what I've seen so far and what I've watched, I think he's better. I think he I, I think he does a better job in the post. His footwork seems better. I mean, again, people had anybody in their life ever refer- this I'm not trying to be ugly. Had had Bucket and Malcolm ever been used in the same sentence before? No. I think Malcolm used it in a sentence one time. Okay. <laughs> Does that count? No. 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 I don't think so. I just I think obviously Malcolm had the the edge defensively. But I th- I think overall Danger could potentially definitely be better for us. I will say – I'll say this, and I'm going to say it and then kind of probably duck. But I feel like Danger is similar to DeAndre in the sense that he is a a big with kind of a guard skill set. Like, I think that he I mean, has mo- – I've watched tape of him. Like, he moves yes. and has a skill set of a guard like DeAndre. That's what I'm saying. His, but he's not, obviously, as athletic his as DeAndre footwork by any his means. His ability he to move like he in the post ballet. and score it is and very impressive for his Pilates size. and ballet. Maybe. He's very twinkle-toed. That's he, moves, what I'm he, he just moves very well. Jack he is nimble. a big man, though. Dane be nimble. Dane be quick. Dane dump, jump over a candlestick. Well, yeah, I think he can probably jump over more than that, but... Um, before we move on, I count. Well, are you done with Dane? You yeah. got more Dane stuff? No. Let's talk about the running rumor out there on another potential addition. Aaron Scott. What are your feelings on that? If that were true, I don't I, I don't have any information one way or another, but six seven, one ninety. I mean, I've seen it thrown back out there on the the verse um i mean i don't hate it as a piece I mean, to kenny's point i mean especially if if david comes back and you got pj i'd be in on aaron good defender shoots 37% from 3 i don't know how many intra conference transfers will pull or in legal yeah, it kind of it seems kind of questionable once you start pulling from all the. Uh, your uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but your co AAC Player of the Year just entered the portal today. Really, yep, Youngblood, Chris Youngblood. Interesting. What is going on there? That why one doesn't seem why like are they losing everybody? Though. I I don't know. It is weird. 
maybe it. Do they know uh, something about their coach that I mean, we maybe, don't know? Maybe it's an NIL issue in South Florida. But I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. It is that they're losing everybody. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't disagree. It could be a situation where they're kind of getting pushed out too. But the the co AAC player of the year is getting pushed out of well South Florida. Except he is an asterisk to that, right? I think some of the other players hitting the portal is more of a hey, I think we got lucky this last year type of thing. We just outworked everybody, and I can get more talented players that can also outwork people. And we had a really easy schedule. Let's be exactly. real. Exactly. Like, yeah, I mean, I think that they know exactly how that went down. With Youngblood, it's weird, right? Is that him just testing the water just yeah. to get a check? It has I mean, to be, right? USF has money. Like, let's let's keep for that real for sure. Uh, in general, I think I mean, so. They're building a new stadium. I think in general they have money. I mean, their endowment's super high. I, sure. I think that there's enough people in Tampa to support them. I mean, maybe. Um, I don't know. It does seem weird all that, that being he would s- hit the portal. All, all that being said, I mean, he's not the the other co-defensive. I mean, co-AAC player of the year was is in the portal as well, and John L. Davis. So if, if David comes back. Well, there's a reason for that. Yeah, I think we know. Sure, I'm just now. saying that. Is if, there any chance he goes anywhere other than Michigan? If David, I mean, he shook Penny's hand. Damn, you're right. Dude, could you imagine? Oh, God. I'd be okay, great. I'm going to stop. What, John L. <laughs> at the one, PJ at the two, and David at the three? Yeah. Is that what you're about to say? <laughs> there ain't enough balls on the court, baby. I'm not going <laughs> to. I do have a name for y'all that I want to throw out there to you. Uh-oh. What's that? Um, are y'all interested in Khalif Battle? We've in theory, down, we've been down that road. I mean, I guess Def- theory, we've been down the recruiting road. Definitely, we haven't, I know he hasn't played for the Tigers. I, I just meant we've been down that recruiting. I'm not <laughs> a huge Cleve Battle fan. What, especially if David's coming back? I, no, oh I, no, I, there's of course no not. Way. There's no way. Of, no, of course not. Test. It's one or the other. And I just don't know, like. They do too much of the same thing. Yeah. They need, they you, both need I the mean, ball you just, way too much. We just talked about Danger's potential concerns defensively. You've said PJ will get, get his ass down. He'll guard. I mean, battle to me is like – I mean, TJ said this before we started. He's a volume yeah. scoring guy. Like, is he going to bring that effort on both sides of the floor every night? I mean, what – I you got to – Penny said he's going with fit and culture and mm-hmm. throwing out. How do we know, this though? Dude, I, that's what I'm saying. So maybe I don't know. Like There's a, To me, that doesn't seem like a fit. This doesn't. He doesn't seem like a guy that's going to come in and do whatever it takes to just win. Work. He seems like a guy that wants to come in. He wants to get his shots up. He wants to make it to the next level. More and of that's what, what we just had right. this year. He seems like he should have been on this last team. <laughs> But, he's but also, if the guys are out, if that guy is outnumbered by guys who are committed, did and you see what invested? What Hurley said: all it takes is one in the locker room. Well, we don't. But but all it takes is one. Khalif had nothing to do with the issues at Arkansas this year. I don't know uh, who had to do. They with were still pretty their booty issues. cheeks of a team. No, I I'm talking about locker room. That's apropos for their issues, but. <laughs> Given what is occurring in that locker room, you chose to use booty cheeks. That's not <laughs> real. Very appropriate. That is not a real thing. Oh, okay. There's no love triangle. Okay. Um, but you, and this is coming from this is coming from someone that I'm close to that's that's a booster at Arkansas. That's a big basketball fan, who says Khalif. They Arkansas fans loved Khalif Battle this year. Loved them. He can score. Why yeah, because he scored like 45. I'll t- so a night. Let, let's bring that over to the Tigers. But here's the thing. Okay, so yeah. you're gonna, we've already talked about it. He needs 75 shots a game. It's not it, true. It is true. It's it not quite true. literally, look at this. You have a record of this. What do you mean? He shoots not, in the, the high 30s. Scored, and, and the night he scored 42, he only shot 15 times. Yeah, get out of my face, man. The, okay. 14 Outlier. of 14 from the line. I don't know. Outlier. No, Dude, he can him, score. Offensively, he's great. He's can he might be take talking some... me into this. I will say, however, if you have if we have PJ and Khalif, we're going to be shooting fifty three free, free throws a game. <laughs> I mean, and I'm our, down our, for that. Our games, our games are going to so rival long. the SEC CBS football games. 
in length. Look, I, I'm not. I, I wouldn't. I'm not against winning games from the free throw line every night. Look, look at this stretch right here, Timothy. I'm going to read this to you. Starting February 21st against 24th, 21st against Missouri, he was 14 of 14 from the free throw line. Next game against Vandy, 14 of 17 at Kentucky, 17 of 18 against LSU, 13 of 14 at Alabama, 11 of 11 against Vandy, 13 of 14. Nine of ten. At, We're talking. At to, look, I can see it in TJ's face. He is he is no. melting in his iceness. That's seven straight games of ten plus free throws. I know, night. but that's such and a shooting, shitty experience to watch that basketball. Who that's cares? Shooting I like, care. No, in that, TJ. In that in that ten game stretch, he shot like ninety five percent from the free throw line. Give me all of that. Look, I love the ninety five percent on like one hundred six attempts. That's let me, incredible. I love can, that. Let me, I'm going to hit. So you hit him with that stat. Let me hit you with something else, TJ. We're going to break you down here, okay? Who was the other guard that Memphis was associated with last year that everybody said the same thing about? Shot jacker, inefficient, can't lead a team. You're going to know the name as soon as I say it. Last year? Last year. Very early on. Caleb Love. Yeah, and I said no to Caleb. Of roll back the tape. But look what happened yeah, with Caleb in his Arizona. Point is look at him. I know. Look at what he did. He's the Pac-12 Player of the Year. I think TJ might have also said that about David Jones initially. I did not say that about David Jones. He's a volume say. guy. <laughs> I did. He is a volume guy. That I know. I'm just true. saying a volume guy that was inefficient on a bad team who became efficient and still shot volume. I think Kenny might be talking me into it. No, stop. Hey. He does not play defense. He's going to take some bad shots. You're going to have to live and die by him on your team. That's not. It's no, not what. It. It's not That's what. That's not. Tr- that, Don't come to the floor, he, he might take some bad shots, but he's also going to get to the line. Who else took a lot of bad dude. shots? Yeah. <laughs> That's, I hate when a game is played through the free throw line. It is the worst. I, is I don't. That's worst. why I'm not joking. Our games would be three hours and 15 minutes. It is the night. worst. But if we're. I have what headphones on. The but I hell heard that was that for many of walls. Those are definitely gunshots, and I, I hear cars still, squealing off. Still occurring. Wow. All right. Um, wind shares not looking great there at Butler, Temple, 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 or Arkansas. So he's been. Is that literally still happening? Still happening. Wow. Yes, it is. Uh, and so he's been. Good on bad teams. Like I, I, I don't know. I is that what we want to? Jesus do we need Christ! To be yeah. <laughs> How many shots is that? I'll lay low for a while. That's at least two dozen shots. At least. Speaking of a volume shoot, <laughs> Khalif <laughs> Battle is outside. Khalif. Don't put that on. Hey, maybe Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's our, it's it's in our. I'm nature. just kidding. The jokes are all I'm there. Sorry. The jokes are it's all our, there. It's in our nature. I mean, I'm generally actually getting a little bit concerned. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, you guys want to go down the Cleef Battle Train? Go for it. I think there's a better fit out there personally. How does he have? I think going with Cleef Battle is getting you I mean, back I, into just grabbing the hot name out there as opposed to a guy that's going to work personally. I, I think I'd rather have Aaron Jones. Aaron Scott, excuse me. Yeah, it's still is happening. this legitimate? Yeah, it's still happening. Are they just driving down? They're absolutely Parkway, shooting. Firing at each other? They're not driving down. They're just parked, They're parked. Down in our parking lot. I think I'd rather have Aaron Scott. I really mean that. Well, I don't Two think different they're players. the same player. They're not well, the same I know, player. but that's my saying. I don't want that volume guy. Can you not have both? You can have both. Go get both. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think you Give have me both. both. I don't think so. I think so. I'm, I'm. I like the opportunity of having. I, as much as y'all, as much as we talk about, we don't want inefficient volume shooters. My, I like. I'm sorry. I am so distracted right now. It's fair. I like. But to catch a stray, my, especially in college basketball, having a guy who can get a shot off at any time. I don't. Yeah, he can do that. Or I I'll just give him that. Not he even can get it off. Just get a shot off. Get hot at literally yeah. any point in time. He absolutely can do that. If that's what you want, perfect. He's not going to play the defense you want, though. I don't think that's true. But okay. But I'm looking at his. Statistics. I think you are. I think you are 
you were generalizing hey, we're talking, based on what we we're s- talking about a 35 percent uh three-point shooter no, no no great at scoring again great at scoring for sure i would not take that away from him <laughs> how does he have eligibility left uh the seven games he played at butler or temple excuse me and, well, and then he only he played 11 at temple the year before that yeah Sure how old is him. how old is Khalif going to be? Uh, Forty seven. I don't know. I'm gonna close this window. Yep. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Is it still happening? I ha- yep. Either that or Kenny farted. I how, just heard a shot fire away from them. Though. How are the that? How do they have that many bullets? What's going on? I don't know. Um, all right, Trey. For basketball, anything else? I think that's it, and we probably legitimately need to take a break to secure the perimeter and we will be right back hopefully and it's undeniable how important the core four was to Memphis. The city didn't care about the Grizzlies until mm-hmm. the core four came. Game. Yo, so that game. core four team put that team on the map here. Yep. Right? Not mm-hmm. not not a national eyes to put it on the map here, which is what matters. Yep. That's what made the Grizzlies become our city's team, right? Like mm-hmm. us, that team, that organization became in, endeared to us through that run. Yep. But you had to be there, bro. Like you had to watch that to get that. John Moran and them didn't see that. Nope. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he didn't grow up a Grizzlies fan. Like he, <laughs> I'm fine with the reality, these dudes don't care about. It. But we had this inclusion mentality where it's like we want to talk, make make ourselves as important as what other teams are doing and what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Marcus All is not who y'all trying to make him out to be, bro. Mark was that dude. Mm-hmm. Mark was a very good player. He was a very key part of that run, right? But even within that run, he's not the player that people are trying to make him like he is, right? If the, if, if John and them were playing and they had uniforms on, yeah, you probably could have got them a little longer. They was already dressed <laughs> and ready to go. <laughs> was, thank you. Tune in to the Anthony Sane Show Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. And that's what I was going to go ahead and warn everybody about that anyway. We are going to be more precautious on yeah, people 100%, this year. Yeah, 100%. You have And to. we're going to peel back layers. I think it even extends past Jordan Brown, if we're being honest. I think it could extend to Javon Quinterly as well. But he had very good moments. But you look at what was said about him in the offseason, fair or not, yeah. by Nate Oates leaving Alabama. And you yeah. go, okay, oh, okay, maybe there was something there. After things. the way last year went... I don't think it's what were we saying about Jordan Brown when he committed? They could be the player. Oh of the year. my gosh, player in of the, the year candidate. No, I can't. Any of these guys that join this team, I can't just like take it at surface value and just no. say, oh yeah, that's I have to do it to dig a little deeper. Dig deeper. Now, even if you dig deeper with PJ Haggerty, you feel fine. Yeah, exactly. But you dig deeper with Dane Danger. There's some there's some concerns. There's things. some things that I you know I don't think are perfect. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. TJ, a day after we recorded, but a day before our podcast came out, the university announced that none That felt other, like a shot. That felt like and, a shot at me. No, it wasn't. I just, it was unfortunate timing. We're on a tape delay here, ladies and gentlemen. Kenny weren't so uh, slow. UConn just won their six national titles since 1999. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're pretty good. Wonder what that feels like. <laughs> They've won more guys. national titles than we've won tournament games. tournament games. They're third all time, I think, in championships in the last twenty five years. Uh, wow. Anyway, Ryan, old ball coach Ryan Silverfield, signed his contract extinct, extinct, extinction five year twelve point two five milli. Um. It was a long time coming. Yeah, I mean, I felt like it was going to be agreed upon months ago, and, you know, whatever. They came to terms. Just dotted their I's and crossed their T's. Uh, yeah. Good for them.
good for him though. What do you have you read like the intricacies of the contract? The only thing I know is that he gets like an additional two hundred thousand if he wins the natty. Shoot, which seems, seems I'll pay for that. Grossly low. Yeah, it should be I'll millions. Pay, I'll pay. That. Well, I mean, altogether, I think it adds up because like a playoff or a winning the American is yeah. two hundred. A playoff appearance is a one fifty. Making it to the semifinals is two fifty. Winning the champ, whatever, right? So yeah, it's it like adding needs up to be, to be over a million. But I mean, just winning the title itself should be a million plus. Uh, Uncle Fred should be able to just go ahead and say, "Yep." I mean, I'm sure there's there. some unwritten All right. he'll probably get. Let's let's do this hypothetical. If someone came to you with a number and said you have to pay this amount to win college football playoff natty, how much would you be willing the to spend? The limit does not exist. Well, like me personally? Oh, yeah, yeah like, what am I? Just like like, like with how my ma- bank account today? Well, like no. 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got kids, dude. Oh, uh, yeah, my bad. But I'm just saying, like, if you were, I, have a, I think I have a twenty in my wallet. Which, <laughs> if you were, if you were Uncle Fred, how much would you? Oh, I mean, it'd be nice to get a, a decent return on investment. I think a national championship would do that. Um, See, that's where I'm starting. Like, yeah, what is? But what's twenty to Uncle Fred? Like ten mil? Here you go. I think it's guaranteed. Yeah, me. I think five million is a solid number there. Like, if there was a GoFundMe started for Ryan Silverfield. Any, After he wins, like, hey, Tiger fans, accumulated together, reward Ryan Silverfield for winning a natty. How much do you think he would? Get? I don't think it's going to pull in that much, but uh, uh, it's, it's beside the point. I mean, I, I think if your general question is what's the cost, if you could pay this number and you're guaranteed a national championship, I think collectively on the front end, if you're like, hey, you pay this, boom, it's going to happen, like however that would work out. I mean, a cool millions a guarantee. I feel like they could raise a million, without a doubt. I think five million is probably the number. One million dollars. I don't. I mean, the a uh, national championship does so much for you, especially at our level. Yeah, I think five feel five to ten feels right. Could you imagine the irony? If Memphis Tiger football program won a national title before the Grizzlies, the Tiger basketball program, Stop. Any, anybody else won Stop. their championship? I was thinking about this earlier today. You'd be able to tell Tiger football fans nothing. Planning, like thinking about where we'll be playing the first round. I was like, "Am I real? Are we really going to be going to Eugene, Oxford? Let's go." I know. I mean, I, I was hoping it was somewhere drivable, but then I was like, it legitimately could be like at Oregon, and I'm fine. I'm going. I, I would go. Yeah, I, we'd yeah. Go. Oh, we'd be one, there. BCM would be there. Thousand percent. If we make the playoff, I do not care. We could be playing in Indonesia. I am going. You're not <laughs> Indonesia. No, I mean yes. it's not going to be there. But I'm going. It's such a far fly. What if they play Dude, Indonesia this is, University? This is, <laughs> this is literally once in a lifetime. Hopefully not, but yes. I mean, let's be real. I don't know. I think five million is right. I'm trying to look up the payouts for each bowl game. So if you're going to play in the what? Why are you looking up payout? You're not getting any of the payout. I understand, but think of it from the perspective of the school is going to get two point five million dollars just for winning the. Oh, bowl I like game. it. It's called re- it's like revenue sharing. Basically, you're you're looking up like a revenue share for the coach, right? Yeah, well, based some, on the payout, essentially, kind of like that. But like, the school is going to get two point five million for winning the playoff first playoff game, and then winning the natty. They let's just say they win another two point five. They're going to win more than that, but that's already five million there. So the school yeah, wins five million. So why that? is the coach not get? Don't you split that with the conference? Uh, some of it, I think it's a percentage of it. Are you saying after splitting, you're getting two point five? Uh, we'll say after. Okay. At that point, so like, why shouldn't the coach get something similar? Something definitely comparable. I, the number's five million for me. I couldn't pay it, but Trey could, maybe. No. Um, no, about the contract, some fun stuff in there. Um, now, so if they win nine or more games, he gets a raise. Of hundred grand, every year they win nine games. If they win ten games, and he goes to the conference championship, he'll get two hundred fifty thousand dollars raise, and the deal gets extended for two years. But that 
that can only happen one time. But the winning nine games, that can just happen forever and ever and ever and ever. I guess until the contract expires in 2028. So long story short, it actually just became a two-year extension. He gets 25000 just for beating Power 5 or Power 4, I guess, now conference team. It's not bad. There's also a phrase that says, if the university attains membership into a Power 5 conference, this bonus provision shall become null and void in the contract the years of the University of a Power 5 conference. Yeah, I think that's okay, though, because there's everyone's getting more money. Well, now this point. one says the highest possible incentive is a national title win, which would bring him 500. Oh, I think they're including all the previous, obviously. Yeah. Also, good note. So Being national coach of the year is only a $50,000 bonus. I mean, you're saying only 50000 Like, that's nothing. I mean, for being the national coach of the year? I get it. I get it. We're not talking about Southwest Tennessee Writers Association Coach of the Year. <laughs> national <laughs> Coach of the Year. The Shelby County. We're not talking about the Cordova <laughs> the BCM Shooting Studios <laughs> Coach of the Year. By the way, I think we do need to kind of update everybody on what's going on. It seems decent. The shooting out there. stopped, so we seem to be fine. As far as I know, I can't hear anymore. But Kenny yeah. also closed the window, so that may be why we're that that probably helped. Also, something that I think flew under the radar that we didn't talk about: uh, Cramsey signed a new two-year deal for one million dollars, so he's I making a cool five hundred thou. I did too. Yeah, but the big deal is you got him for two more years, uh, barring anything crazy. I happened. did not that that. Flew under the radar. Well, I me. saw him asked. He was asked in a pr uh, press conference availability the other day, like all the jobs, because apparently he has been inundated with job opportunities since he's been here sure. since last year. And he just basically said, hey, man, my I'm wife is here. happy. Yeah. My kids are happy. <clears throat> you can't pay for happiness, man. Yeah, that's true. And you're making 500000 Like You're pretty, doing pretty damn good. Like I don't know what the offensive coordinator is. Like 500 in Memphis? Yeah. Like, Come on, man. You can do a little salary calculator. Living out in Collierville? He's Salary's living the life, out? dude. Lives yeah. next door to me. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's actually Kenny's next door neighbor. I do know that he's he, not. his kids go to Collierville. Yeah, I, I just want to put that out there. He doesn't live next door to me. <laughs> um, We talked about Lou Esposito leaving, hitting the portal. Yeah. And boy, <laughs> boy. Did Ryan deliver on a, a, a backfill? Yeah. I mean, we were talking about, like, oh, it's got to be a very specific coach. Like, it's got to be a, a, someone who has D.C. experience, but they also are going to have to find a D-line coach. Like, who are they going to hire? And I think they figured it out. And Ward, our boy Ward, called T.J. out. T.J., when we had a full D.C. opening, said, there's no way Nowinski leaves. Ohio. Why would he? And he seemed correct. Until little did he know he was just waiting for the defensive line slash co defensive coordinator position to open up. He said, Hey, I'm not ready to be the I'm not gonna be the DC. I want to be the co DC. And really focus in on that defensive line. Man. Yeah, took his same time. I'm gonna be honest. I Ohio. talked about this before we started. A little bit of how this has played out has me questioning whether or not <laughs> old Lou was pushed out. Never. Maybe Ryan got a little win that uh, Nowinski wanted, a little flavor of that Memphis barbecue. Said, hey, you guys got any bussies near town? Got on down here. That's just, that is, kind of I literally rocker. think that's word the for word the conversation. That he left Ohio as the D.C. to take co-anything is ridiculous. Yeah. To me. Well, it financially, I think it's the only thing that logically makes sense. I mean, I don't know that it is signed, sealed, delivered, and the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, but TJ has some investigative research to share with you I, all. I think. Is so he's up? not in the Memphis system as being certified hired yet, but this right here, I don't even know if that's, you can see that. That's his he? coach's profile page at uh, Ohio Bobcats. .com. Athletics.com. Yeah, he is no longer on that page, Ladies which gentlemen, is a good I, sign. TJ and I are a little bit familiar with software development. When you see that 404 error pop up... That hmm. means uh, that's, that that page is no longer available. That uh, that thing ain't loading. The page you're looking for no longer exists. That man gone. 
Hey, gone. No, it, it, I think so. Two ways of looking at this is a he's well, we just Hankin signed two years for seven hundred and fifty thousand. I think is what the deal was there. So automatically, he's doubling the amount of money he's going to get, even if he just makes the same as Hankins by coming to Memphis. So he's getting a raise. But also, I think it's fair to say that there's a little more... He's coming to a a legitimate playoff contender. That also plays into it and kind of plays a part of what I'm saying. Like You get a little more visibility to who you are. Like I don't know how many people are watching them action outside of Tuesday afternoons I mean, or whatever, yeah. but you, you just get a little more, more visibility at Memphis than you would at Ohio. Can we talk about what Nowinski was able to do with that Bobcats defense, though? Oh, dude. It's insane. What was he? We were looking at this before we started. I don't know what they – somewhere around 113 or something. Total yeah, it was defense. like 114. Last year, total def- defense yards per game, Ohio was fifth – no, fourth in the country. They gave up 265 yards a ball game in 12 games played. That's 169 through the air, 96 on the ground. You know what they are in total defense points allowed per game? Fifth. They give up 15.4 points a ball game. So put it in perspective, in 2021, they were allowing 432 yards per game. In 2022 was 427 and then last year at 2023 237.9 yards per game you cut your yardage it's in half unbelievable how much I mean, of that was the strength of schedule versus the scheme who knows but that I mean, is i can't absurd. imagine that their schedule was dramatically easier by that amount you're probably right i mean that is absurd to to, to cut it in half. But an absolute turnaround to be a f- top five defense in the country after you were 100 plus. I mean, the several yeah. years before that. Four guys over four sacks. That gets me real excited. Six, five, four and a half, four and a half. When's the last time Memphis has had those kind of sack numbers? I say that. We're going to test it. It's come back last year. They gave up 30 points one time all year. In a 30 to 16 loss to Miami of Ohio. Wow. Outside of that, they only gave up more than 20 one time. Well, two, though, Miami of Ohio, and then they lost 23 13 at Northern Illinois. Wow. That's it. You signed me up for that. We're winning the American easy. And making the playoff if we give up 15 points a game. Yeah, we, we talked about. I mean, no, that's not like, can I bet on that? Can you guarantee me 15 points a game? I mean, I, you're talking about a number. I will throw $5 million on that. Well, we talked about last week, you know, do we check all these boxes? I don't even remember the source at this point. But I think now I feel a little bit better about checking some boxes. But I'm obviously not checking all of the boxes, but I feel – Feel a little bit better. What I'm box? Out. What box did that help you check? Uh, defensive line, pass rushing. I mean, that's what the guy's known for is defensive end, four three formation. So there can be some, a little bit of a change there, but I, I think we at least get after the quarterback now. So, what, we, what are we looking at sacks a night from these fellows last year? Uh, Thirty six sacks all season. So if you want to. Tag that up as just three in twelve a game. games, so yeah, three three a night. Memphis had twenty three. If that gives you any indication on the difference, so it's an extra sack a game essentially. I mean, I'll take that. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. That one guy had six, one guy had five, two guys had four and a half. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and then the last bit. I don't know. I mean, is it news? Was it a teaser? What was it? Today was the solar eclipse. We talked about it last week. What a time it was. TJ and I experienced it at work today. Um, the football Twitter account teased a little. What It appears to be maybe some new uniforms coming. Mm. It was a uh, solar eclipse day post, but it said coming soon, and it was a photograph of a black uni that had a little bit different accent on it. The it sleeves did. had white stripes. The 
collar was blue. The number was blue, it looked like. Uh, we've been talking about it. It seems like it's a good time for a, a uni refresh. We might be, we might be seeing some new unis coming pretty soon. Yeah, it definitely stood out. Maybe a, a full overhaul of uh, I found of the, the picture. set. Which so, they better hurry up and release them. Well, I guess they've been working with uh, EA already, probably. So EA, EA probably ha already has whatever it is that we're having. If not, they need to go ahead and release it so EA can get it in the game. So to your point, I'm looking at them now. I took a screenshot, took a zoom in. It does look like the collar. It's the thing. Is I can't tell if it's just my eyes playing with me. I did well, look they at the also have for a little bit like today. A, a filter-ish on there. Yeah. So like they could have been adjusting some stuff too, but... I looked at the, the sun a little bit, but I do see what seems to be white stripes, blue collar, blue sleeves, white number outlined in blue. Not a lot of gray. I know people are going to get a little upset Flip about it that. this way. Oh, it is white. Okay. Yeah, I think people are going to be upset by that. Not a lot of gray there. But uh, I is think the that helmet looks telling, is the helmet telling you anything? See a white face mask? White face mask? No, that's all you got. I can't tell if it's a black helmet or a, or just a blue helmet with poor lighting. Um, but maybe, maybe all. I mean, that may be a a blue uniform for all we know. Well, it looks pretty black though. It does, but today things looked fairly black, and they weren't. The sun was just being hidden. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. I'm excited about new. You think those black unis will be as dark as this Dunkel was? Mm, probably not. I'm gonna be honest with you. This thing was interesting. I uh, it grew on me. I'm very malty, man. It is. It's very dark. A, I feel like it needed to be ice, ice cold, baby. But uh, I liked it. All right, let me see if there's a little write up on this. On Give the you a dunkle? little. Yeah, on, yeah, on the Dunkel. It's probably on the can. I missed it. This though. is Cross Towns celebrating six years of great beer. Six cents. Uh, there's like a Buddhist monk on here drinking a beer, which is I thought that was weird myself. I don't. That's not legal. Uh, not a lot of feedback, Bob. Other than everyone's like, "Yeah, this thing is hella dark." It really is. It's very malty. I, I gave. I know I've said that already, but that's the one thing that stood out to me. Um, looking at the can itself, it's black, yellow, red. That's pretty consistent for Crosstown. I feel like they, they I kind of like, like I kind of do like this can though. Um, it's okay. One thing I've never noticed is that's actually the Crosstown Brewing building right there. That long mm. shed looking thing. Yeah. Is that always in their logo? I don't know. It's the first time I've ever been a long time. To, also, what is going? It's like a saw. Does see look that? a saw, yes. What's going on there? Not sure I get the... Um, It's okay, Cam. You probably like it more than I do. I wish they would have had a play of uh, some sort of shout-out to the Sixth Sense movie in there. I don't know. Like a Bruce... Oh, is this monk supposed to be Bruce Willis? No, What? How'd you get there? Dude, don't talk about Bruce Willis right now. He's on the struggle bus. I can't talk about him, period. No. Um, looking at the can, dude, probably like a 5.7. I don't... Wow. It's not great to You're me. You're putting but that down there with uh, Memphis Made. Yeah, it's not great. I don't really understand what's going on, personally. I think that's my issue. This font has a little bit of a uh, schoolhouse rock feel to I it. I did get that vibe. So for that, I'm adding points. I mean, it's not great. It is good, though. I think it's better than the Memphis Mate. I'm going to go sixes. Like a 6-2 six is what it feels like. 6-2? Okay. What about the beer? Um, that It feels on par with what I just gave you. Wow. I okay. mean, this feels like a 6-2 all around. Straight up. It's funny you say that. I put it in as probably a 6 flat. Like, I don't think I'd have two of them. It did get better the more I drank it, but it's just so malt forward to me, and I just don't love that about it. So... Yeah, I mean, it's it's not great, Bob. I don't know that I'm walking into Crosstown and ordering this. Goodness, no. Heh. Um, Heavens, no. Do you get that reference? Beat the cat. 
I don't know what that does. Hey, you gotta go and Pete the Cat. Uh, I would drink it again, but it's not gonna be my first choice. Oh, okay. Definitely. I think I would need it again. to be like extremely ice, cold, ice, ice cold, like fresh out the. Not, not the, how we had it this eve. Mm. Well, there it is. That's your six cents by Crosstown Review, uh, coming out at pretty much a six flat total score. I just finished it. Um. Well, hopefully TJ, Kenny, and I get home safely tonight, and we will have an episode next week. And if not, we love you guys. It was nice. Um, this was fun while it lasted. And still, what? It's happening again. We're going to have to find an alternative route home. Uh, yeah, before anything else that. happens, you guys come back next week, whether we're here or not with a cold beer, and stay for our hot takes or watch an old episode if we're not here. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode of Tigers Untapped, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Like and subscribe at Bluff City Media's YouTube page. Head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co for comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports.